Hello everybody, Dave Neal here, stand-up comic host of Bachelor Nation News. In this video, we have Hannah Brown joining Special Forces. There's been two episodes of this new TV show. I didn't know if I wanted to cover it or give you guys my review of it because generally I hate network TV. It is the worst. But I'm going to give you guys my honest review after watching two episodes of Hannah Brown in Special Forces. Join me on Instagram at dneals and be part of my Special Force on Patreon. Patreon.com Patreon slash Dave Neal. My hair looks like it's uh, been in the special forces does my hair look like i fly airplanes those ones with the convertible top you know when you got the uh you got the uh scarf and the glasses that's what i look like right here i've got heavenly hair today folks voluminous closer to the lord all right so hannah brown we're gonna get into it she's got an interview in several statements and q a's that she's done if you guys want my instant honest review i'm gonna give it to you right now here are my thoughts on Hannah Brown. And don't get mad at me. Everyone's saying you're a hater, Dave. I'm going to tell you this right now. I think it's a really good TV show. I do. Now, I don't want to make light of all of the uh, troops that are out there that actually put their life on the line. When the when the celebrities did special forces, they're running through special training camp that that is kind of like the special forces, but they don't have the fear of being away from their family for an extended period of time. They don't, all those types of things. You know, my father fought in Vietnam. I have so much respect for the troops and what they actually do. This in no way makes light of the actual, you know, things that they do. But... And but they still had to do some of the drills. And, you know, you come from a cushy lifestyle of the pageant world and Bachelor. Sure, it must hurt to get, uh, I don't know, stiffed, as it were, pun intended, in a fantasy suite or, you know, heartbroken or whatever. But a little different when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, how you might feel on this reality show having grown men yelling at you. Let's watch her trailer. Then I'm going to play the interview and see what she has to say about it. I definitely want to change the perception some people have of me and show that I am so much more and also have grown from the time that I was looking for love on reality TV. Get in your ready stance. Boxing. Bye. You know, for those listening on the audio only, they're boxing each other. They're out in some random desert in Jordan, which by the way, looks beautiful. This course really gets me to a place where I'm discovering Hand-to-hand -hand combat. Me. Special Forces World's Toughest Test. And of course, they've got some British guy, uh, you're not doing enough, you know, kind of all this stuff. But anyway, w let's play a one, let's play her Q&A, and then I'm going to play what our good pal Sarah Heron said, deputy editor of Us Weekly, in their interview that they did together. We'll save that, uh, but let's play the Q&A first. If you were in a negative mindset, uh, you could get yourself hurt. So it was really important to have that warrior mindset in everything that I did. And that's something I really have taken away from the whole experience. You know, what I like about this show is is there is a nice little variety of people. You've got moms like Jamie Lynn Spears, you know, uh, sister to Bernie Spears. You've got Beverly Mitchell, my first crush, my first crush growing up. Does this ring a bell? Seventh heaven. Isn't that dad in jail for like some crazy, you can't even say those words, what he's in jail for, but uh, look it up. Anyway, uh, her, her not her real dad, Beverly Mitchell's uh, uh, father from the show. Uh, anyway, he, he was doing more than just uh, getting, okay, <laughs> oh boy. Moving on, folks. Uh, but then you've also got uh, Scaramucci, who was like, you know, a press secretary for Trump for like a week. The old Scaramucci. Uh, you've got Mike Piazza, you know, and he's a former Hall of Fame uh, catcher uh, for the Mets, I believe, right? And now, you know, you know, people that have been retired for 10 years, like Nastia Lukin and, you know, gold medalist, uh, uh, you know, all these different people, uh, Mel B, Scary Spice. It's an interesting little cast that Dwight Howard, you know, interesting little cast that they have there. A lot of people that have probably been enabled with their handlers and their assistants, and now they're just getting yelled at, and they're like, what? Really? You're going to yell at me? And it's like, what do you think you signed up for? <laughs> this is called special forces, not special treatment, you chump. How did you prepare for special forces? I prepared by trying to work out outside as much as possible. Also, I really tried to prepare mentally. I did some like hypnosis things where I just listened and tried to meditate. What scared you the most about doing special really forces? Into the course, but also when I first entered the course, like, am I going to be my, the thing that holds me back? What thoughts came to mind when you first showed up to camp? I definitely got my head a little bit because like we have Olympians, professional athletes, and I'm just like, I, I was on a TV show. 
Now, by the way, I'm not going to spoil anything to the last minute of this video, so don't worry. But at the last minute, I'll, I'll talk about the things we've already seen and heard. So I'll let you know in advance when I talk about the spoilers from just the two episodes we've already seen. What's what surprised you about Special really Forces? Had to, as recruits, learn to lean on each other um, and work together. And I've never got so close with people that I never knew before in such a short amount of time. Like even I got more close with Dwight Howard than I did with any of my fantasy suite guys. It's like whoa, that's a the, share in a bunk. Those are my brothers and sisters. Special Forces, World's Toughest Test, season premiere, January 4th. Okay, so we got all that, all right? Um, and then she posted photos here of her with her ruck and all that. I mean, she looks good. You know, she's out there dripping wet. They did a submerged test. The first episode, they had to dive backwards out of a helicopter into the water. I mean, it's some heavy stuff, guys. Some heavy stuff. People have already been evacuated because of, not evacuated, but kicked off because of injuries and things like that. Uh, is this Hannah Brown? Oh, that's Hillary Duff. I was going to say, what is that? that those? Anyway, so let's listen to what Sarah Heron and, uh, and Hannah Brown had to say. She was struggling. Like, she was always there to support. Let's talk about some of the people, because this is an interesting cast. I mean, a lot of athletes, which makes sense, but then a lot of, you know, people from all walks of life. It's random. When you saw who was coming or when you met everyone, who were you most excited to meet? Um... I would have been scary I think spice. sometimes I was like, oh my gosh, like, why am I here? There are so many, like, cool people there but i think mel b of course because i'm like scary spice is always my favorite and she's just exceeded my expectations of just being like so fun to be mm -hmm. around and just hilarious the best part this isn't a spoiler but mel b sneaks cigarettes into the camp contraband or whatever whatever they call it oh it's just funny stuff it's funny and they basically have it's almost like big brother like they have a studio set up but it's them in a campsite it's like they're in a military camp and they've got you know it's uh, it's obviously sort of cosplay you know in the sense that they're wearing these things it's not stolen valor they're not saying they they're just they're just sort of almost honoring and, and exposing how hard uh, the life of being a soldier might actually be because they're only doing this at most for a dozen days. Some people don't even last it through the first night. Um, and then of course, like all the athletes like kind of intimidated me, but it was really cool to be able to just see what makes them so great in their field of work. Um, just the motivation and just the, the power of their bodies and stuff was really cool, but. I mean, everyone. I mean, my guess, and I don't have any spoilers. My guess is the winner, and I don't even know if there is a winner, would be Danny Amendola. I'll tell you why. He was on the Patriots. He's young, so he's still like I think or mid thirties. He's retired, obviously, but he's super athletic as a wide receiver, but like strong guy. He's agile, and the more important thing is, I think football closely rep, 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 um, replicates the military. And hold on a second. In this, like I played football, and in the sense that your coaches are yelling at you nonstop, they're trying to get you to battle through adversity. They're, you don't resp you respond in a yes sir, no sir type of way versus someone like Gus Kentworthy, I think that's his name, who's on the show, who's like a gold medal skier, and he's given them attitude and all these things. And you're like, geez, this guy needs a real like you know, you know, uh, uh, lesson here. And then you think of someone like Dwight Howard, who's a mega star from the NBA. And you go, how's he going to deal with a bunch of grown men yelling at him? And, you know, honestly, I, I think he's doing great so far. It's, I I'll be honest, there's several moments in the show. And again, they're not paying me to say this, and I would never promote a show that I didn't actually enjoy. There's several moments where I'm sort of like teared up watching it going, you know, any, in any show where you see humans battle, uh, against um, the norm of culture, which is very comfortable. I got my Apple Watch. We go to bed at a certain hour. We, uh, you know, no blue light on this and, you know, all these things. Uh, and then you put them in this situation that that historically we haven't as humans had to be in for a long time. It makes you appreciate those that are fighting for their lives right now the country of Ukraine. It makes you appreciate those in our country that put their life on the line. And honestly... You can you cannot like a lot of the politics that surround you know I don't know the uh, over militarization of the police force which I believe you know our police force should be there to help people and not just like control them I think we have a big problem with that where it's like you know we got armored suits and this and that but on a human level police that put themselves in situations that are you know above and beyond what someone who just goes to a you know a harmless job does so you get to see that and get a lot of respect for them. I mean, truly, I was just I, I felt. Somebody asked me like, who inspired you the most? It's like, honestly, everyone inspired me at some point in time because 
we're all like facing a fear or being triggered by something and not wanting to do the thing, but then deciding to do the thing anyway, like do it, doing it scared. And watching people do that was just so inspiring to me and made me just like really respect them so much more. Um, and you, you saw that in everyone. So, yeah. We see you bond with Beverly Mitchell pretty quickly mm -hmm. in the episode one. Tell seventh me about her. Heaven, what was it like to hang out? Seventh heaven. Seven. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got to see each other. We kind of, we, before we had to quarantine. And so. I didn't think Beverly, I thought she looked like a wet blanket going into this. And she's got some fight in her. I was like, oh, Bevy, Bevy Mitch, BM, go get it, girl. We, she was one of the people I realized was on the show with me right before we started. And so. I think we became each other's like support system really quickly because we were both like, what are we doing here? You know, <laughs> oh, just a little bit nervous, but she's like, she's a mom in real life. And she was, she became like a mama bear there for me. Um, and then I was able to support her when she was really struggling. Us Weekly, turn off the stupid sound in the background, please. Especially if like you're not from like a super athletic or not somebody that people would assume would be on the show. It was really easy to get in your head of feeling not enough. And I think, as you see, she really struggled with that sometimes. And, and so did I. Um, and it was just great to be able to be there to support her. And we're still friends now. And um, yeah, really, really thankful for that friendship. Jamie Lynn Spears is someone else who maybe could fall in that category of you guys, yes. you know, feeling maybe like you were written off or didn't know why you were there. She's kind of like a polarizing ish figure. What was it like hanging out with her? Um, I remember being like shocked when I saw her like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she's doing this. But I can honestly say she is one of the, the nicest people I've met, the most down to earth. Um, she kept spirits. Even when I met her once in an elevator in, I believe, Atlanta, Georgia, and she was actually very nice. When she was struggling, like she was always there. Nobody asked. Everyone else, she kept people laughing. Like I, I cannot say one bad thing about my experience with her. Then let me. I'm kidding. I think she is. She's just like a good. She's a good person um, for my experience with her. Mm -hmm. So it was cool to be able to see a side that I don't think is all always portrayed of her and and like i said this is my experience and i'm i w was so thankful to be able to have time with jamie lynn kate goslin is iconic in reality television all right so then they go through the whole list of everyone who's on the show and yeah it's interesting you know it's interesting to see people like scaramucci when without his business suit on getting down to the nitty-gritty and guys like mike piazza who are retired millionaires and nothing else going on it's like hey you want to come to uh, the country of jordan for two weeks and have grown men yell at you while you push your body to the brink yeah let me see it's either that or go to my kids softball game <laughs> you know sure to hell i'll do it all right if you want to see me uh put my uh oh, uh uh, you know, I, there's nothing. There's nothing that I do that is re relative to special forces. But my special talent is trying to make people laugh on stage. And if you want to see that, I'm going to be live with Katie Thurston February 15th in San Diego. And tickets are going fast. The VIP tickets are almost sold out. They come with a special adult toy for you and uh, some other treats like a Q and A. And um, a uh, you get to do the meet and greet afterwards. And you remember, I did la just last year. I did a Q and A with Hannah Brown, and which went very well. Although I wasn't in control of the tickets for that one. But I'm telling you right now. This show is going to sell out Katie Thurston stand-up comedy, myself stand-up comedy, and I think we have at least two other very funny comedic acts that are going to be performing with us, and I'll be with you guys later this afternoon, Friday afternoon, for our final Bachelor Rush Hour of the week. Come check that out, and I will talk to you guys in a little bit. Bye.